you're old enough to have remembered TV before, you know, cable, satellite, I guess, we used to have these things called rabbit ears on top of every TV, these antenna, and maybe you've seen them on, if you've never seen it in person, you've seen it in a comic strip or something like that. But these little bunny ears were sitting on on top of every television. And if you turn to CBS or your Channel 6 or whatever, you're, you're trying to tune in, you you would have to adjust the antenna slightly to get the static out of the image. The static is discoherent or non, non-belonging information that's entering that channel or that station that you're trying to tune into. And you can experience this on, a, on an FM dial, actually. I guess you don't, can't see that anymore either. But um, nonetheless, when you're trying to tune into a single station or a channel of information, you need coherence. And to do that, you need the antenna to be very well tuned to the information that you're trying to receive. Each human body has complex antenna within it, and that antenna is actually the DNA itself. And so when a double-stranded DNA peels apart, it literally looks like rabbit ears. It has these two long ends on it that then stick out into the vibration of the environment. And those two long ends vibrating are going to either very clearly say, I am human, this is my identity, this is my body, I remember self, and it's going to go and heal itself to its full potential or recreate itself, stem cells, et cetera, et cetera. Or there's going to be misinformation and static in the field and the the DNA won't quite figure out what am I supposed to be right now. And so it might realize, well, I must be damaged then. And so I'm going to make a repair thing or I'm going to trigger inflammation. I'm going to start to try to regenerate a, a, a damaged system here. And so the that deep self-identity depends on how clear of a signal are you getting from the original vibration of self, if you will. And, and the things that start to introduce the static are pretty well, you know, predictable based on your own life. You've experienced these things. You can do it without any contact with the outside environment. You can do it through the mind. Stress, lack of sleep, uh, fear, guilt, shame, these disempowering emotions that we've learned to program each other with in our egoic minds are, the, are the, some of the most potent ways to introduce static to the antenna. And so now suddenly you're not able to go back to your original design and you produce some sort of decrement or diseased version of previous self because you can't quite get the clear signal. And so that's basically how disease starts to accumulate is stress in the system of some sort. Static being that stress starts to misshape your re-expression of self. Aging is a slow forgetting of who you are, basically. Aging is this decremental expression of a physical body that's losing touch with the original design that happened inside the womb. And I see myself aging, and I'm fascinated by that. I'm like, wow, I am literally, because of my human mind and my abstract belief systems of who I am, designing a body that is disconnected or discordant or static-filled compared to the thing that helped me self-organize 70 trillion cells into my human body inside the womb of my mother. And so as a physician, it's been my fascination to start to to look back into that womb and, and for myself and say, what are the aspects of myself? And you can almost do this physically where you just like look back in time to your left and look deep back into that womb space and and start to just inquire there. Feel that for yourself. Like what, what was the sensation of becoming self, becoming a physical manifestation of something ancient, something perfectly designed before biology became real for, in my mother's womb? My physical self must have known itself very well because it was able to pull biology to it and organize it in this complex quaternary structure that we would call a human body. So what did that feel like to be inside the womb? And everything that we've seen heal people really is is, is taking you back into a womb-like experience. Silence, meditation, breath work, you know, the the um, powerful, you know, therapies of, of uh, what, I, what I would call float medicine, where you can go into a float tank and literally just be in silence floating in a magnesium bath that's so full of salt that it's like you know, 100 times saltier than the ocean. 
And in these plasma states of liquid, you start to heal, you start to do repair. And so the closer you can bring your own physical environment into this, and now you're seeing it come out of, you know, fortunately, I think the, the biohacking era of like everybody needed a glucose monitor and aura rings and all this, we're starting to realize, no, 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 you need to be in silence. You need a cold bath and you need, a, you know, a hot sauna. You know, you need the elements to take you into silence and listening at the cellular level of who was I before I had my first emotion that started to deprogram my original design. And so that that process is really exciting to me of like we're going to start backing this up, backing this up, backing this up into this womb-like experience. And I can simply just check in with my own embryo every day now. Just a you know, gentle look to the left, look into my womb state, and wonder at it, like, what can you inform me? Can you, can I, re what can I remember back into the womb, which was just a fraction of time ago? It was only 50 years ago that I was in that womb. And humans have been around 300,000 years. Life's been around 4 billion on the planet. So, my goodness, 50 years ago, that's like, I, I should have a very clear connect to that original mathematical design of the womb. And so, it's an interesting inquiry thing for all of us. is what have I come to believe that allows me to age in disease that I didn't believe? Like?